matter, kid? You okay? Matter, cowboy? You all right? Is he all right? I don't know. Look, he's been crying. Must live around here somewhere. Yeah, around here somewhere. Could be anywhere. Tell us where you live, son. Like you don't even hear us. How about it, young fella? Can you tell us what's the matter? You hurt somewhere? Tell me where you hurt. Something's wrong with him, for sure. Yeah, we're only a couple of miles from town. Might be better if we take him in with us, huh? Come on, son. You want to ride in a big truck? What do you got for 19? We just pulled in. 19? Let me look. We brought a lost kid in with us. He's sick or something. What am I supposed to do with him? Better call the police. Tell them we found a kid wandering the highway. Okay. Here's your bill of lading. Doc, seven, two drops, and then the Frisco. What's wrong with him? I don't know. I can't get anything out of him. When am I supposed to make Frisco? By midnight. Well, I better barrel. See you later, cowboy. Just stay there, kid. Yeah? It went out two days ago. I saw them load it myself. Okay, I'll put a tracer on it. Hey, amigo, don't say I'd... watch the step. Huh? Yeah. Hey, kid. Look, the only other place it could be is Denver. All right over here, Sonny. All right, here we go. Well, hi there. What did he do, escape the death house? Stole City Hall. Here's the kid we radioed in about, Sergeant. Hi, young fella. What's his name? Can't get a peep out of him. I think he's scared. Here, feel his hand. What's your name, Sonny? Sure you don't want it? First time an ice cream cone didn't work. Deaf mute? No, he can hear. When there's a noise back of him, he jumps a little, but he doesn't talk. Won't even try. You're melting. Looks like I'm stuck with it. You all right, son? Are you frightened or something? Dr. Nasey, please. Dr. Nasey? Hi, Petey. Sergeant Shaw. I got a little boy Hi, here, 67 years old. I think you ought to take a look at him. I'll send him over. Uh, Paul, do you know this kid? I thought he looked familiar. Hey, Petey? Hey, Petey. District car brought him in. Lost child. Well, that's Tony Atlas, kid. Hey, boy. Where's your mother? What's the matter, boy? Hmm? Where's your mother? She's a cute little guy. Just sits there and won't say a word. Tony Atlas, I know him. Yeah, I used to work with him in Homicide. He's down Central now. Petey. Petey, where's your mother? I better get Tony. How'd it go, Tony? The jury's got it now. He'd be lucky if he gets less than 10. If he doesn't get 20, the jury should be sent out. Hey, Tony. Hey, Paul. How are you? Hey, you're looking great. What brings you downtown? Oh, I just thought I'd drop down and see you. What's up? You seen Linda lately? A week ago, and I picked up Petey. You talked to her since? What are you, a marriage counselor? <laughs> no, nothing like that. It's Petey. He was down at the station. Well, what's he doing down there? He was picked up, lost. One of our men brought him in. What happened? We don't know what happened. He's not hurt. He's just sort of in a daze. Where is he now? Down at Georgia Street. The doc's looking. You told me he wasn't hurt. There are no injuries, but he's just. How long ago was he picked up? About two hours ago. Two hours? What about Linda? Tony. I've already called Linda. There's no answer. She hasn't called in? Nobody's called in. Take me to Petey. Right. Tell me you got yourself lost. Petey, it's me. Your dad. Everything's gonna be all right, son. He doesn't even know me. What's wrong? Well, we can't be certain. 
That's why I asked Dr. Hodges to have a look at him. Sergeant Atlas, Dr. Hodges, Staff Psychiatrist, General Hospital. Your boy is suffering from shock of some kind. He can hear, but he can't connect. Something happened. Probably something he saw was too big a burden for his mind to carry. Petey. Where's your mother? Petey. Where were you when you left? Where was he found? 12th and Central. He was standing on the corner. Some guy noticed there was something wrong with him and he called us. Did you check the guy? Yeah, he don't know anything. Just pass him by. Checked out. Where could she be? Tony, has she been working lately? Uh, she's been doing a little secretary work since we separated, just odd jobs. Well, maybe she left the kid She with wouldn't somebody. let that kid out of her sight for ten minutes. This is Tony Atlas. Send a car over to my place, 3350 Westwood Terrace, apartment 5. I think there's something wrong there. Break in if you have to. I'm at Georgia Street. Get right back to me. Out of it for me? There are no rules. I had hoped he might. Look, don't be offended by anything I ask you. You know the boy. You can help me know him better. Sure, anything you say. Has he been healthy mentally? Good as any. Better than most, I guess. Any serious illnesses? Kid stuff, mom's measles. Sensitive nature. Sensitive, I guess you'd call him that. No sissy, though. You said you and your wife were separated, Sergeant. Yes. What caused the separation? Little things I really don't know. Was well, there much arguing? You know, shouting in front of the boy. Well, nothing big. I guess when there was, he was in on some of it. Well, look, Doc, I know what you're driving at, but it wasn't that kind of a split up. They were silly things. I, I don't even know now. How long have you been separated? About eight weeks. That's a long time in his life. Well, I'm with him every chance I get. My days off, weekends. I guess that isn't living with him, though, is it? Yeah, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Nine o'clock. Hold it. They checked the apartment. Empty and no sign of trouble. Landlady said Linda left with Petey at nine this morning on a job. Doesn't know where. Tell him to send it her description. Age 27, height five foot three, brown hair, blue eyes. That's it. I don't know what she was wearing. Linda Atlas, age 27, height five foot three. Brown hair, blue eyes. Check everything. Petey, where's Petey? Who's Petey? My little boy. What little boy? There was no kid around here. Where was he? Where was he? There wasn't any little boy. If there was, I would have seen. Joey, maybe she's lying and maybe she isn't lying. Either way, we got to get rid of her. Nobody's going to hurt her. We've done enough. Oh, what do you have to do? Paint this guy a mural? Yeah, yeah, you could do it. You're the kind you of. You bet do it. I could do it. I could do just about anything to save my skin. We all gotta save our skins, Joe. Don't you try anything, Gil. Because that'll make you just like Jess. You'll get just what he gets. Just touch her, either one of you. Will you talk to him? Will you talk to him before I go nuts? Listen to me, boy. The cops got my picture downtown. We let her go. Five minutes later, she'll take me out of the mug book. And I'm not going to that gas chamber alone, not alone. If I gotta go because your buddy over there's got rocks in his head, you're gonna go with me. So you better talk to him. Joey, we've got to be smart about this, Joey. What kind of smart, Gil? Jess is kind of smart? Nobody's gonna hurt her no matter what. 
Joey, we weren't gonna hurt anybody, you and me. But just an old man and he was living alone. Unarmed robbery. Now who's gonna figure that he's gonna hire a secretary? Only he did, Joey. Now we're in trouble. We never gotten any trouble before. Well, you're in trouble now. There ain't none bigger. Listen, Joey. We gotta get rid of her. You couldn't do that, Gil. Think of what it'd be like. You know what you'd have to do? You have to put your hands around her neck and choke her. Or maybe maybe pick up something and hit her. I couldn't do that. You couldn't do it either, Gil. What's the difference, man or woman? Just do like you did to the old man, that's all. Oh, you know what you did, don't you? <laughs> you beat his brains out. That's what you did. I didn't want to do that. Oh, brother. Why did I ever get mixed up with you two punks? For more than $6,000 a piece, that's why. Now, the only reason we took you in in the first place is because you said you could open up the safe. Well, I got it open, didn't sure, I? Sure, with a sledgehammer. Afterwards. Didn't need you for that. Oh, I wish I didn't have any of it. I wish I was out of here. If you were smart, you'd all be out of here. All three of you. You got the money you came for. Why did you take it and go? Here, lady. You want to call the cops now or wait till we go? Joey, buddy, listen to me. We've been pals for a long time now, haven't we? Now, never once have I steered you wrong. Isn't that right? Now, come on. No. Okay, you got to listen to me now. Now, I don't like this any more than you do. You know that. Now, if I change, it's not because I... You couldn't change. Everything's changed, Joey. Take my word for it. Gil, you're smart. You could figure a way out. There ain't any other way. Okay. Then we stay here. Till somebody figures out something, we stay right here. Yeah, I'm gonna go upstairs, take a look around. I'll think of something, lady. Believe me. The sodium pentothal will take effect in just a few seconds. The boy will be in a state of what we call twilight sleep. He'll talk? In a few moments, he'll open his eyes. Will he recognize me? It would be better if he didn't, so don't say anything. But he'll talk. He may tell us everything. He may tell us only part of it. He may tell us nothing. Do you have any special pet name that you and his mother use? No, we just call him Petey. Hello, Petey. Hello. Say, I bet you had a big time this morning when you got up, didn't you? Try hard to remember. Now, your mommy had some work to do, and you went along with her. Where'd you go then, Petey? Bought in the car. I always liked that. And you rode? And we rode. Good. It was a fine day for a ride. Where'd you go, Petey? We went to a house. A big house. A big house. Where was it, Petey? There was a man there. He was talking to Mommy. Good. Now, can you tell me where it was, Petey? The man said I could go out and play. And I did. Good. You played? And then? And then I heard Mommy, and I ran. Yes, Petey, you ran? And I looked in the window. <gasps> That's all he can give us now. He'll sleep for a while. When he comes out of it, he may talk. There's not much chance, though. Thank you.
upstairs. Lady's purse. Please, could I have a glass of water? Oh, sure, Joey boy. Get your girlfriend a glass of water now. Maybe she'll give you a little kiss if you treat her real nice. You're rotten, you know that? Just rotten. Excuse me all the pieces. Keep it up, go on, just keep it up. Sure, I'll get your water. Don't try editing. Now, don't. This guy goes crazy, he could kill the both of us. You saw what happened to the old man. Anybody ever told me I hit a lady like I done to you and I told him he was nuts? I'm not the kind to do that. So, maybe the lady fell downstairs. Dude, tell him to shut up! I had all I'd taken from him! Can't blame him, Joey. Look at the mess we're in. Then let him figure something out. Take my car. The keys are in my purse. In an hour, you could be 60 miles away from here. In an hour, we could be in the can when you blow the whistle on us. We could tie her up real tight. Forget that. We could be over the border by dark. Look at her. Will you look at her? Can't you see what she's trying to do? Well, you're just dying to get us in that car, aren't you? Somebody reports you missing, and the first thing they're going to start looking for is that car. I thought that was the old man's car. Get it undercover. Meanwhile, think about how many other things there are that we don't know about her. Sense doing is it's gonna break his heart. Oh, that's okay. I'll take it. You working here? Yeah, I'm just helping out around the place for a couple of days. I'd like to break it to him myself. Well, he's resting right now. I don't think he wants to be bothered. Well, it's too bad. I'd like to see his face fall. A dime, huh? Yep, ten cents. Okay. You probably have to wrestle him for it. How many times are we gonna be that lucky? How many times, Joey? It's up to you. We don't know much. My little boy Petey's in shock. Something scared him, something he saw. Whatever it was, it was big. And Linda, his mother, is missing. How long? Half a day, maybe longer. Somebody's holding her. They can't hold her forever. What does the doctor say about the boy? He says not to count on him. Not right now, anyway. Petey was picked up at 12th and Central. Stuart, I want you to shake that neighborhood. Take it apart. Somebody might remember it. A little guy like that, wandering alone. What about pictures? Check the print shop. They should be ready. Both the boy and his mother. Right. 
How about starting with what the boy saw? If it was big enough to throw him in a shot, it should have been reported. I think Linda stumbled into something, inside, under a roof, out of sight. Or in a car. Did she drive a car? There's a tracer on the car. Nothing's turned up. Since we separated, Linda's worked as a public stenographer. Ran an open ad and classified. She went out in a job. There's no way of telling where. Could be a psycho. Boy's mother involved. They work that way sometimes, answer an ad. We've got to figure it. I've got a long list of the kind that operate that way. I'll round them up. Some things we ought to know, Tony. What about personal habits? Was she a drinker, for instance? She'd take a drink, that's about all. What about boyfriends? None, as far as I know. Was she depressed? Moody? Things are a little mixed up now, but she's not the type to go off the deep end. Or could she have gone shopping with them? Those supermarkets are murdered, maybe a department store. If Petey was missing this long, she'd have called. She could have. How did they get separated? If the boy saw something, how did he get away? Why would they let him? It happened. Cap, let's hold off on radio and TV for a while. Who's ever holding Linda? Let's not frighten him into anything. Where do you want in on this? At the apartment. She might have kept a record of some of the places she worked. Paul and I will go over and take a quick look. Oh, here's the prints on the boy. Want to check them? All right. Fine. Good. I'll get him out. place empty before. Paul, check the desk over there. Hello? Louise? The Tony Atlas. I'm trying to locate Linda. She's not at home and I wondered if... She's at Disneyland, Tony. She and Petey. I talked to her this morning. Well, was she going anywhere else, she say? No. Oh, yes, some job she had to go on first. She was taking Petey with her. Where was the job? She tell you that? No, she didn't, Tony, and they probably won't be back till late. You know how it is at Disneyland. Yeah. Well, thanks, Louise. She had a job first, and then she was going to take Petey to Disneyland. Doesn't figure. He was picked up at 12th and Central. They never made Disneyland. I told her, I told her a hundred times. Give me a call. Tell me where you're working. Nothing much in the desk. Just a grocery list. A letter from Brockton, Massachusetts. That's from my mother. A couple of bills. Start with the A's. I'm going to check the bill. Yeah. to you after you leave here I never thought much about that what do you think about Joey yourself ever listen Joey I know Gil's your friend and I know he's always stuck by you but that was in little things this is a big thing Joey this is murder it may cost Gil his life if he's caught. And he'd even kill you to save his own life. Gil? Lady, you're sure all wrong about him. Look, Joey, if you let me go while they're still outside, and you run while there's time, they may never find you for, for killing Mr. Canfield. There's a chance you, you may never be caught. 
But if anything happens to me, you will be caught, all three of you. There's, there'll be no place you can run, no place in the world you can hide. They'll hunt you, and, and, and they'll never quit until they find you. What makes you think you're so special? Maybe she's a very important person. <laughs> a big movie star or something, eh? I'm not the one that's special. My husband is a police officer. Oh, lady. A cop's wife? When did you dream that one up? It's true. Sure. And we're the three musketeers. Joey, hey, it's all fixed. We decided you're right. There's no use hurting her. We'd only get in more trouble. Yeah, that's right. Look, we'll do it your way. When, when we leave, we'll, we'll take her with us, that's all. Isn't that right, Gil? That's the scoop, buddy. Okay, that's more like it. All right. Now, this is the way it goes. We'll stay here for a couple of hours till it gets dark. We'll eat, we'll rest. Then I'll get out of here and I'll get my stepfather's car. How's that sound to you, huh? Where we take her? Across the border, something like that. No, Joey, don't believe it. How about it, buddy? Sure, Gil. He'll get a gun. Without a gun, they're afraid of you. With a gun, they... Will you just... shut up? Gun's a good idea, Joey. We might need one. Yeah, we might need one. Okay. Now, my stepfather's got an army 45. He hits the bottle as soon as he gets home. He's out cold by 10 o'clock. I'll get the gun. Then it's all settled, huh? So? Let's relax. These pictures of the kid, they're not working. Six of us covered everything down the line. There's another crew covering the whole neighborhood. Nothing so far. Well, he could have been dropped here by a car. At that angle, we can't check. Or a bus. You check the buses? No. Police. We're looking for a little boy, looks like this. Wearing twin holsters, one gun missing. See him? Nope, a little boy like that alone, I'd have remembered. We don't know whether he's alone or not. We think he might have been on a bus sometime this morning. Oh, I wasn't on this one, sorry. Say, so you might check the depot. There's about 20 guys pushing bus on this run. Thanks. He hasn't seen him. Have Cap check all the drivers in this run. Calling car 126. 126, Stuart. 126, Central Produce Market, 11th and Alameda. Check with the officers there. They've got some information on the boy. Right, thanks. You drive. This man works here, Sergeant. He says he saw the boy this morning. Yes, the boy in the picture. What time do you remember? Before lunchtime, 11.30 perhaps. I was pushing my truck. I almost run him over. Where was that? Right here. I see him come from the dispatcher's window. Thanks. Police. What can I do for you? You saw this boy today? Not me. Well, he was here this morning, 11, 11.30, maybe earlier. Well, I didn't get on to four. Jim Warren's a guy you'd want to see. Well, where can I reach him? You got a home number on him? Sure, I I'll call him for you. What's it all about? You'll read about it in the papers. Bessie? Jim there? Just a minute. There's a guy here who wants to talk to you. It's his wife. He ain't got home yet. Mrs. Warren? No, Sergeant Atlas, police. No, no, no trouble. He has some information we need. When do you expect him? Well, where do you live, Mrs. Warren? We'll be right over. 1329 Sweeney Street. Thank you. Thanks. Corn B. Better turn it off. It's his favorite. He knew we were having it, too. It's not like him to be late on a corned beef night. Does he usually come right home after work, Mrs. Warren? Well, on his feet all day like he is, he likes to get home. Of course, it is Saturday. Payday? He likes to stop off for a beer or two. He isn't a drinking man. Any particular place? Well, there's one place, Al's right spot over on Jefferson somewhere. 
you wouldn't have to know the phone number. Well, it just so happens he got a little late last night, too. I'll call him. I says to him, listen, Al, I don't care if you do own a place. If you're going to act up, do it in some other joint. we got to keep this place respectable. So what happens? He fires me. You'll be all right tomorrow. Al's right spot. Is Jim Warren there? Just a minute. Jim Warren here. Hey, here, lady. I haven't seen him all day. Well, baby, we're in the clear. He wasn't there. They haven't seen him. Sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Warren. We'll keep in touch. Good night. I just don't understand it. There isn't anything in the world Jim likes better than corned beef. Oh, no, no, no. You lay off that stuff. Maybe the dame would like a drink. Might make her a little friendlier. Jess, when we're out of here, you do just as you please, but not now. Hey, Joey. Ask your girlfriend if she'd like a drink. Now, grow up, Jess. Just a minute, mister. I'm growing up to your size any day of the week. We better answer it, you. How can I? Joy, you and Tyra, would you? Now, lady, whoever that is, you get rid of him real quick, you understand? Joey, just like the last time. And lady, please, be smart. Hello? Is this the Canfield residence? Yes, it is. Well, who is this? I'm a stenographer. I'm working for Mr. Canfield. Oh, may I speak to him, please? He's... He's not in right now. Well, do you know when he will be? He didn't say. Could I take a message? Just have him call his niece, please. Who are you talking to, hon? It's Uncle Ben's night for dinner. I just called to remind him. Oh, honey, again? It's only once a month, and it won't be forever. I know. It just seems that way. What's going to happen if Mr. Canfield doesn't call back? Maybe she'll come over here. Maybe she'll think something's wrong and call the police. If that happens, you better not be here. You can leave right now. Tie me up and leave. Lady, you're always in there thinking, aren't you? Well, forget it. Our plans are all made and nobody is going to change them. Nobody, but possibly that woman there on the phone. Anybody who might drop in. Or the police. Oh, you're always in there thinking too, aren't you? Look, Sergeant. I've done a lot of things, but I never got mixed up with nothing with no dame. Especially she's married to a cop. I'm not that crazy, Sergeant. Crazy, but not that crazy. Anything? Uh, nothing here. How's Petey? Doc says it'll be all right. Not in time. That's all I was doing. On my way to my girl's house for dinner, and you picked me up. Is that why you had this on you? So maybe they was going to ask me to carve. Funny. We're racking up the oddballs and getting nowhere. 10, 11 hours she's missing. Not a rumble. We'll find it, Tony. Everybody tells them we'll find her. Nobody tells them how. One guy in a bat and we're nowhere. We're using everything we have, Tony. I only wish we had more. We have. Percentage. You told me that a long time ago, Cap. Figure the percentages, work the short odds, forget the long ones. You should have tattooed it on my chest. Where do you figure the short odds are? Look, we've got a crime. 90% of all the crimes of the worker repeaters. You told me that, too. That makes it a nine to one shot. We got a card in the guy who did this. So? What kind of a crime? What kind of a criminal? Say it was a thief and a robbery Linda stumbled into. Makes sense. Something not reported. Let's figure it. Petey was seen at a produce market. Let's say he was brought here maybe by some truckers. From out here, let's say. Mainly citrus groves, ranches, big spreads. That puts money in it. Keeps it out of sight. How are we going to search an area like that? Take us a week. We're not. Look, over here, people with money. Over here, people who'd like some. Now, suppose someone over here had a sizable amount of cash or something valuable tucked away. Someone working around here gets wind of it. It's a rumor. The rumor drifts back here. 
and spreads and is picked up by somebody with a record. A character in that neighborhood, a guy who knew his ground. A stranger would have taken something obvious, a bank or a supermarket. We'll pull cards on every ex-con, every parolee in that whole area. You pick the neighborhood with plenty of talent. Give me a rundown on this one. George French, safe man. Out of prison for eight months, been idle for six. No job, no income. He's been due to start rooting around for quite a while. Oh, we're looking for George French. You police? We'd just like to talk to him. You're a little late. San Francisco police picked him up yesterday. You his wife? We've been married just a week. Sorry to bother you. What else have I got to do? If only you don't talk, you're gonna explode. Now I know what people mean when they say when you want a cop, they're never around. I feel like the cop that isn't there. You never told me about it. What happened between you and Linda? I never told anybody. I guess I didn't want anybody to know what a lunkhead I was. I won't spread it around. I'll start it with a little thing. Sitting around the apartment one night just talking, she said she'd like to do a little scenographic work, earn some extra money. She even answered an ad that day, made herself ten bucks. I said, kind of kidding, we don't need ten bucks, we got ten bucks. Only she wasn't kidding, she figured she could save the money and eventually we, we could get a house, backyard for Petey. Me, big man, put my foot down. No wife of mine was going to work to get us a house. I'll get the house, I told her. Big detective sergeant makes a lot of money. All she wanted to do was help, and I wouldn't let her. She tried to reason with me, and I wouldn't listen. Wrapped myself up in a lot of phony pride and walked out. There's a way back, Tony. Back where? Whoever has her has had her a long time, 10 or 12 hours. Time's running out, Paul. Every cop within a hundred miles has been called in on this. We'll find her, Tony. Dear God, where's Petey? You, uh... Looking for something, honey? No. Maybe she's looking for the little boy who wasn't there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's sure taking him a long time to find a cop. I'll take these out in the kitchen. No, you won't. You'll leave them right here, and you'll sit down right over there. Hey, it's time for me to shove off. If I need to, I'll call you. Hey, I will know it's you. I'll never mind explaining it to him again, will you? I'll ring once, and I'll hang up, and I'll call right back. How long do you figure it'll take it? Uh, a couple hours. I better make sure the phone number. Hey, brainwave. Now don't go stupid on us like Joey here, will you? All we need is for you to get picked up with this on you. Okay. I'll remember it. And make sure you come back. Because if you get any wise ideas and take a powder, and the cops don't get you, I will. Guild don't run out on pals. Who asked you? When I want to talk to you, I'll let you know. You don't have no, 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 don't hate me. Never hate you. You come one step closer to me, you crazy idiot, and I'll brain you so help me. I'll scramble you worse than you are now. like a rat or something. Thanks. I won't forget that. Don't you forget it. Joey, now I'm trusting you to watch the girl till I get back. No more rough stuff, huh? Sure, Gil. As long as he leaves me alone, I'll leave him alone. 
that's a deal. Let me get out of here, and I'll get rid of this. Nobody's gonna need it. Crazy notion, Myra. I'm just asking for trouble. Maybe you're right, but I just have a feeling. Remember, not a sound. There's a light on inside. I know he's in there. Yeah, he's probably in there counting his money. Oh, look, honey, if he was in trouble, you'd have heard from him. Like I said, he probably went to a movie. But you can't be sure of that. I'll prove it to you. Let's check the garage. Come on. When is he Gil? Don't worry about Gil. He'll be caught. I'm not worried about Gil. I'm worried about me. You keep your eye on her. I'm going to take a look out back. You know, it'd be nice if we could go to a movie ourselves. If we ever get dinner, that is. Uncle Ben's car is here. And whose car is that? Something is wrong. We'd better call the police. Now, don't get carried away. First, let's take a look. Linda Atlas. Well, the old boy must be entertaining. Oh, don't be silly. He's too old, and besides that, he's too sensible. There ain't no age when a man stops being a fool, honey. I still think we ought to call the police. What do you want to do? Bust in there and spoil the old man's good time? That's a sure way of getting written out of his will. Ah, uh, come on. Maybe you're right. We better not get nosy. I'll call him in the morning. That's right. Now let's go have dinner, huh? <laughs> How about that? The secret life of Uncle Ben Canfield. Honey, you just never know. Stop ringing that doorbell. You shouldn't be doing that. I'm old enough. You want to see my driver's license? We're looking for Marty Fane. I understand he hangs out here. He hangs somewhere else now. I haven't seen him in months. Where? No, but I'm glad it's not here. Okay. You thought I was looking for you. Why? Nothing. I ain't done nothing since I got out. Where were you today? Well, I worked till five. I got a job in the kitchen at the Meridian Hotel. And I come here. I spend every night here, don't I? Yeah, he spends every night here. That's all he spends. See? Okay. You know, it's Saturday night. Well, this guy is brilliant. He even knows what day it is. Just thinking what I'd be doing if I was out. I'll tell you what I'd be doing. I'd have me a real dame. Now, not just any ordinary broad, see? No, sir, I'd have me a real dame. What's that for? Saturday night. May as well have some music. Oh, sure. Well, the music. 
music never hurt anybody. You got to drink that whole bottle? This stuff's good for me. Makes me feel real friendly. You know, Joey, I, I'm just like you now. I don't want to hurt any dames. Especially this one. What do you do on Saturday night? Go dancing sometimes. Like tonight? You lay off, Jess. Now take it easy, Joey. There's no harm in a little dance. You lay off. It's okay, Joey. Sure. Now you watch this, Joey. You may learn some. I thought I heard something outside. I don't hear anything. Well, yeah, I think I heard it too, Joe. It's probably only a dog. You better go take a look. You better go. It's all right, Joey. You don't have to worry. Oh, I'll look out front. I'm all right, Joey. Be sure you look around real good now. We don't want any trouble. We don't want any trouble at all. What's the matter, baby? Nothing's the matter. Don't you ever buy your girls a drink? Oh, you want a drink? We said we were going to be friendly, didn't we? Sure, sure, real friend. Come on. Sure, a little drink makes things even better. I'm not much of a bourbon drinker. Is there anything else? Will scotch do it? Yeah, scotch is fine. Listen, a girl with Jess gets anything she wants. But now, Jess, who? It just may turn out to be her. Yeah? Police. Your name, Polikoff? Hey, look, if it's about that little fight in the bar last night, nobody was hurt. And it ain't as if I walked up to this girl and talked to her. I mean, my wife, all she's right, got an all awful... Right. I'm not interested in what you did last night. Where were you this morning? Oh, I work regular now. Hercules Van and Storage. You can check it. Okay. Sorry to bother you. Hey, look, you forget to mention about that little fight last night. I mean, it wasn't much. Forget and... it. Dirty conscience. Ah, uh, top suspects are all gone now. Bottom of the barrel. Jess Reber, a juvenile. What's his record? Car clouts, petty theft. Kid stuff, mostly. Kids grow up. <sighs> Police. Jess Reber still live here? Jess lives here all right, but he's not here now. Almost three o'clock. Does he make a habit of this? Should have been here at seven. We were supposed to have a date. What's he done? Maybe nothing. We want to know where he was this morning. He took off kind of early. Does he work? Are you kidding? Not if he can help it. How's he pay his rent around here? Sometimes he gets behind, like now. And I cover for him. Said he'd have it today, though, for sure. Doesn't even show. How about his friends? Anyone in particular? Hangs around mostly with the younger kid, Gil Ramsey. Why? Got an address on Ramsey? Sure. Phone two. Calls him all the time. You shouldn't have tried to run away. 
Why did you do it? I told you you wouldn't get hurt. It's not me that matters now. Joey, there was a little boy here. I didn't lie about that. My little boy, Petey. And I, I don't know where he is, Joey, or what's happened to him. He needs me. Joey, don't you understand? My baby needs me. It's been over 12 hours now. If he was all right, he, he would have come back with some help or something. Something must have happened to him. Joey, please let me go and find him. Gil. Gil, Gil will be back soon. We'll see. It'll be too late then, Joey. Look, you don't have to worry. And you don't have to be afraid of Jess. Joey, we made a fool of Jess. That's one thing he can't stand. He's got to kill us now, both of us. You and me. He'll find a way. He'll, he'll get a gun or something. Where would he find a gun? Yeah. Where? In a closet behind a shoebox, maybe? Oh, take a look at that, will you? A real cat. You know, a thing like that could blow a hole in you the size of your hat. Makes a difference. A gun. We got a whole new deal around here now. Now you tell him who's boss. But slow. Real slow. So that stupid over here can understand. Joey, sit down. You know the lady just saved your life? You sit down, too. Well, while I'm thinking, you better start praying, both of you. Because if Gil ain't back before it's daylight. Her first, Joey. So you can watch. Boy, I never see so many dirty halls. Who is it? Police. What do you want? We're looking for Gilbert Ramsey. Are you his mother? Gil hasn't done anything wrong. Why do you want him? Just routine questioning. Won't take long. But he's not home. He hasn't come home yet. Kind of late for him to be out, isn't it? Any idea where he might be? Maybe a late movie or something. I, I don't know. I don't know where he is. You know a friend of his named Jess Reaver? I don't know any of his friends. He never brings anybody here. Sorry to bother you, Mrs. Ramsey. We might check back later. Good night. Night. I'm going to get the car keys. What's wrong, Gil? What did they want you for? Team questioning, Mama. Now you heard them. I never know what you're doing these days. something bothering me. Well, what's the matter? Gil's mother. Those eyes, it take an hour to cry eyes that red. And she's scared, not just ordinary scared, the way people are when we drop in. Think she might be lying? I'm sure of it. I want you to go. Mama, I've got to go. I've got to go away for a while. 
Yeah, but I'll write you. Tell me now. Tell me what you did. I can't, Mama. Not now. I've just got to get away. Goodbye, Mama. Oh, Gil, stay here tonight, and tomorrow we'll go to the police, you and me together. Open up. Police. Whatever it is, we can... I'll take it. You call in. He's just a boy. He couldn't have done anything bad. Why do you run? We just want to talk to you. Next time won't be the wall. Give yourself up. We gotta stop him. Aim for his legs. Cover me. Crazy kid, how do they get that way? That's the coroner's job, might cost you a badge. This kid's loaded. Must be four or five thousand, maybe more. Lindis. This kid had the answer and I killed him. Smart cop killed him. Gil's dead. You killed him. Did we? Who hit him from the police? Who helped him get a gun? I didn't know he had a gun. He stole the gun. He stole it out of my drawer. Nice handy place to keep it. Where was he tonight, you know? How should I know? I work hard all day long. Come home, generally he's gone. I don't know where he goes. I don't care, maybe. Six thousand dollars. Where'd he get it? I don't know. I'll tell you. Your son was a thief. He stole it. We want to know where he stole it. Did he tell you? No. When he came home, what do you have to say? Nothing. I... Look, your son... He had a change purse on him. It belongs to a woman missing since early this morning. She may be dead. We don't know. But we've got to find her. We think she's wherever Gil got the $6,000. If you know where he got it, tell us. I don't know. He didn't say anything. He'd been out most of the night. He comes in with $6,000 and doesn't have anything to say. Lie to me. Lie to me some more. Why should I lie to you? He's dead now. Why did you have to kill him? He, he tried to kill a cop. What about him? You gonna pin a medal on him? How do you feel? Are you proud of yourself? Kill my boy? There's another boy in this. And it's his mother that's missing. He saw what happened. What your boy did to her. He's in a hospital. Out of his mind. Scared so bad he can't even remember his own name. What about him? I don't want any more suffering. I'd help you if I could. There's no reason not to. Yeah? Gil doesn't need to be protected anymore. Tony, the dispatcher, Warren. His wife called downtown. He just got in. 
Francisco. Call back here. I'll be waiting. All right, Warren, that's four cups. Start remembering. He better start remembering where he's been all night. You can have them when we're through. How about it? I remember the kid. I was on the phone or something, maybe, when they brought him in. They who? A couple of truckers. They said, look after him. How can I? I got a million all right, things. All right, the truckers, who were they? Let me see. Headed for Frisco. Bay Produce. Remember their names? No, but they're with Apex Trucking. Dispatcher in Frisco, no. Apex Trucking. All right. Start talking. The kid? Yeah, we picked him up. He looked like he was hurt. Is he all right? How is he? Where did you pick him up? Do you remember exactly? Well, I can hit it pretty close. We're behind schedule a little bit and gunning it. He was right out there on the highway. I'd say two miles beyond the Garvey turnoff. It'd be right about here they picked him up. Get on the highway, wandering, couldn't have come from too far. There isn't anything in sight. No house, nothing. Find anything? Yeah, there's a side road down about a quarter of a mile. There's an orange grove in the house. Seems to be the only one around. I'll try it. We're like behind. If it's the house we're looking for, we don't want to scare them into anything. Okay. Where is that guy? He's not coming back. He's smart. He's gone. Miles away from here. Yeah. He's smart, all right. Leaves me holding the sack with stupid here. All right. It's time. If you know any prayers, you better start saying them now. You too, sweetheart. You go with stupid here. Only you go first. You leave her alone. Sure. You watch how I leave her alone, Joey. You watch how you scare me. thing he could relate to. Stop the car. Back up. Who? How many? I'd better get McQuaid. Stinking, lousy mess. Tie up with a couple of punks and what happens? This happens. A cinch. 
Nothing to it, a breeze. Sure, and where does it leave me? You think I wanted any part of this? No. Right from the beginning, I told him we ought to think it over. But not him, not Gil. And where is he? Where's that car? You know what he did? He took off. He must be a thousand miles from here by now. Took off and made a sucker out of me. Left me here with you. Place is quiet. Shades are drawn. Could be a watch. We'll cover you, Tony. A shade moves, we'll put a hole in it. No, just don't. Oh, no. No, nobody's going to make a pigeon out of me, not me. Yes, you can do it. Bigelow? Yeah? You and Stewart. Take a couple of the boys and cover the back. Right. That front door is partly glass. We could kick it in. Cover him, boys. One sound out of you, just one, and it'll be your last. downstairs. It's clean up back. All right. Stay down there as she gets it. Drop your guns. I said drop them. Drop them. Jess, they don't want to hurt you. Jess, it's time to give up. One more move. Just one more move and I'll kill her. Listen to me, kid. There are 30 cops around this house. You pull that trigger and they'll start blasting. And even your own mother wouldn't recognize you. Remember, we don't want to hurt you. One word from me and nobody lay a finger on you. Nobody will touch you. Think it over. Give yourself every break. The only chance you've got is to put that gun down. You asked for it, Tom. He's had a bad scare, but he'll be all right. Yeah. 
Please, please, please. It's all right, honey. Please.